I threw good money after bad. And uh, will I ever get the money out of this car that I put in it? No way. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Gearhead 704 and I'm Matt and in case you're new to the channel I upload two times a week every Wednesday and Sunday so if you're not subscribed already go ahead and click that subscribe button but anyway uh oh I got papers flying let me get my papers okay it's a little bit windy out today it's a little bit windy out today all right and the reason I had these papers that were flying away is uh, today we're gonna do a video about how much money I've got into the Fox body here. So I'm gonna try and get fully into that today. And the reason why I wanna share it with you guys is I don't want you to make the same mistakes I have made. And um, I've made a lot of mistakes on this project build. I, I, I'm just gonna go through why, you know, it's, it, I can't point to one thing. Well, I can point to one thing. Uh, you're gonna find that out shortly, but it really, all the little things added up, you know, of, of the money I spent on this car, I'm not even gonna be able to come close to um, getting the money back that I have in the vehicle. But I do still love it. If you're not sure if I still love it, let me throw in this clip. Yes, so it is still a lot of fun for many reasons. Uh, I think it looks great. As you probably know, I'm getting a paint job on it very, very soon at Our Dream Auto. And if you haven't seen those uh, videos, I'm actually gonna link them in the description below. But I did a whole unboxing and this, the look of the car is gonna change a lot. It's not gonna look like this for much longer. Let's just get right into it. I bought this car in 2004. It was listed for $5,500 back then and it was bone stock, and I mean bone stock. It still had the air silencer in it, you know. Um, no mods whatsoever. It was a one owner car, single owner car, and it had about 130,000 miles on it. For 5,500, I paid 5,000 for the car. You know, I knocked off 500 off the price, and really, um, that was probably too much in 2004. Uh, it was a high mileage car, and so uh, one of the first things I did to the car when I got it is actually the convertible top was shot. Um, in fact, this glass here, was um, completely broken and um, the top was just really falling apart and needed a lot of love. Uh, but the body was straight, you know, um, it, that that's what I wanted, a straight car that didn't have uh, frame damage or anything like that. Um, so I replaced the top and also the carpet was dreadful as were the seats. The seats were all ripped up. Yeah, that was, that was basically one of the first few things I did. I, re I replaced all the carpet in here, which uh, is kind of dirty right now replaced the seats, did the top, wheels and tires. Uh, you know, this had the Hurricane stock wheels, if you've seen those. Uh, also put in 373 gears, uh, BBK shorty headers, H-pipe, Flowmasters, typical mods. And uh, I rode with the car in that configuration for a long time. One of the other things I did right at the very beginning was I actually replaced the headlights. Uh, they were all foggy. I don't know why this one actually still says Ford on it. I didn't think that I got uh, Ford factory headlights when I replaced it. Maybe I did, uh, but yeah, I replaced these headlights right at the beginning. Replaced the fog lamps, which now have a crack in them, actually, uh, but they have been replaced. Um, I, re I went over a really uh, hard bump one day and came down hard, and this little piece right up in here broke off. I don't know if you can see that. 
and uh, that's also when these cracked a little bit. But it's really hard to tell from far away. Oh, I did put um, new shocks and struts on it right at the beginning, uh, Takiko. I uh, put that on that BBK cold air intake, which is no longer on there. And um, that was how I ran with it for a long time. And then this is when I really made my first big mistake. Uh, the car was like that for about eight years and I really didn't do too much. And then in 2012, I decided I wanted more power, you know, and um, I took it to a local uh, speed shop at the time. They have gone out of business now. And when I took it to uh, the speed shop, that's really when I made the first big mistake of this project. So that's when the 331 went in. It was a 302 engine before, and like I said, high mileage. I think at that point it had 152,000 miles. So I had put some on since I bought it, but not a ton. And um, I, I went to the shop without really a plan. And this is the first big mistake, okay? Don't really not have a plan for your vehicle or you're gonna end up spending what I did and probably won't be happy with it. Um, so yeah, I went there and I said, I just wanna go faster, should I do a heads cam intake? And they talked me into doing a uh, 331 engine instead, which is completely getting rid of my block, get a whole new block. This is a DSS block. Um, it's not a dart block or anything like that. I think DSS, the only difference is they really put a girdle in it. But um, yeah, so I went with that block and uh, 331, so it's a stroker instead of a 302, and we did heads cam intake, and I didn't even pick them. They just gave me their typical combination. And uh, I thought going this way, like replacing the motor, that they would fix all the problems with the car that I had. You know, if they found any problem along the way, they would tell me and fix it. And I didn't really understand that's not how things work. You go to a shop, you tell them what the, you want, they do that job. Typically, they don't do anything else. Some shops are better than others. You see I use extreme Mustangs a lot and one of the things I do like about Scott is that if he does find something along the way, he at least lets me know about it. He says, hey, this might be a problem. A uh, good example, he did some work recently and he noticed the battery tray right here was um, basically falling apart from all the different battery acid that had been uh, on there and it was just, you know, falling apart, exactly. And so he said, hey, do you wanna replace this? It's not horrible now, but it's getting there. So that's something that we replaced. I probably could have gotten away with, there was nothing wrong with my existing 302 motor. I should have just put a head cam intake in it combination and gone with that and I would have been happy. Um, that caused so many more problems because what they did is they put in a crappy aftermarket motor mounts. Um, and so I had a condition where the, uh, you probably can't see it here, but essentially the steering wheel was knocking on the header. And I've talked about this in a previous video, you know, again, check that video is down in the description below. But, uh, so that was knocking against the header. Whenever you would turn, I went back to the shop and they're like, oh, well, that just happens when you replace 331s. And, uh, you know, I should have been involved more in the forums and, and figuring this stuff out and, and learning and listening. But I wasn't, I just took the shop's advice and uh, yeah. So there was that. Probably the biggest one is that the crank was not balanced correctly. So I let them put this motor in it and the crankshaft was not balanced. And guess what that meant? Uh, the bearings were wore out. And when I brought it back to, it basically it had a bad vibration in it. Um, especially yeah any rpm if you got up in the rpm at all the motor would just shake the car that was because uh the crankshaft was not balanced correctly and so what does that mean i had to do the motor twice so this motor has actually been out of the car and rebuilt it's been almost uh almost a year since the motor was replaced and honestly i wasn't even very happy with the car after i got the 331 in it uh, you know i couldn't uh steer also one thing that they did is they took the uh sway bar off the back so if you hit a bump in the road it would go kind of crazy and i didn't even know that for a while but um yeah it had more power and it sounded louder but it ran terrible yeah the car sat for the next five years i barely drove it wasn't any fun and it just felt like a money pit and i got to the point where i was just ready to sell it you know the project had failed i knew it still needed a paint job i wasn't happy with it and i was just gonna let it go already had too much money into it and uh, my wife actually talked me out of it she said you know what you've always loved that car and um well there's a story that goes behind that let me let me go to the story real quick i think you guys will like this so I didn't want to give up. I didn't want to give up. So I threw good money after bad, and that's when I finally got back into things. I'm not very mechanically inclined. I can do some small things, uh, but I end up causing more problems than anything else. So I had the uh, six-speed Tremec T56 Magnum installed. You can see six-speed there. 
Let me see if I can give you guys a view underneath. I don't know if you could, you're gonna be able to see the transmission or not. <laughs> and so that's when I really got back into it, uh, you know, as I had the motor rebuilt and replaced the transmission and uh, obviously the cost just added up. So let's just get right into the numbers. I've kind of told you why I ended up here, the mistake I made with the first shop. And really what you're gonna see is that you can save a ton of money on these cars by doing the work yourself. And I just wanna show you how much uh, labor can break your budget. If you want to build these cars and you want to do it cheaply, you got to do it yourself. You know, uh, labor can really add up. So we've got $5,000 for the car. The total amount in parts so far is $22,725 and 77 cents. Um, the total labor, $18,936 and 28 cents. So um, actually that doesn't even include, uh, I had to do a clutch replacement at one point, uh, just some maintenance parts, cause I've been keeping up with the list of everything I've spent on the car for quite a while now. So this does include, you know, oil and filter changes and things like that. So maybe you probably don't want to include that in your build. So what I'll try to do is this is a spreadsheet, okay? And I will see if I can share that out in a link in the video, just have a, a general Google uh, Docs shared out account that you can uh, see this read only. So I'm gonna see if I can set that up for you guys. I think I can. And uh, you can see where I spent all the money. Um, but right now the grand total is basically, uh, you know, $48,395.73, almost $49,000. You might as well call it 50. You know, I'm sure I've forgotten something along the way. By the way, keep in mind the car is not even painted yet. Without paint, this car has cost almost $49,000. And uh, it's just an insane amount. Granted, it is over, what, we're in 2019 now, so it's over 15 years, but still, um, no, th for this car to have that much money in it, it should look a lot better than it does. So there you go. If you don't wanna end up in this situation like me, do the work yourself. Um, if you can't do all the work yourself, then at least have a plan. Don't do the motor twice. Okay. That gets expensive. And lastly, there was probably no reason to do the six speed swap. You know, that was probably a little bit overkill to do that. Um, you know, a five speed or cheaper transmission. Uh, those would be the big tips I would give you. Also think about this. I've had the engine out twice and yet the engine bay is still not painted and smooth. So I wasn't really spending time thinking about, uh, how to do the project correctly. And that's how we ended up with here. So I just hope, I hope this helped you guys um, figure out what to do with your projects or I hope you just found it informative. Uh, yeah, this is basically a $50,000 Fox body or it will be more than that by the time the paint's done. So will I ever get the money out of this car that I put in it? No way. Am I gonna enjoy it and love it and just uh, probably hold on to it forever to try and get my personal value out of it? Absolutely. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's content and seeing about how you can dump $50,000 the wrong way into a Fox body. If you did, please hit the like button. If you are stopping in for the first time, please subscribe and we'll see you next time on Gearhead 704.